Hey y'all, I'm Tom, ND3N, and welcome to my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat about connecting and playing with the WSJTX suite of waveforms on the Kenwood TS-890. In this video, I'm going to describe and demonstrate, very limited demonstration, how to connect your TS-890 to your computer, how to set up your rig, and how to get the TS-890 and the WSJTX uh, software suite to talk to each other. I'll also discuss additional settings in WSJTX. And finally, I'll show you how to recognize if you've already worked a station, if they're a new DX country, a new grid square, whatever you're into collecting. I hope you enjoy. Turn on your rig and make sure uh, that the following settings on the front panel are correct. You want your RX equalizer set to off, your TX equalizer set to off, your voice processor set to off, and while we're at it, let's set our meter to the ALC setting. We'll make sure that you're in USB mode right over here. Now, uh, we're gonna go to uh, into the menu settings. We're gonna to go to the rear connectors, group seven. We'll select that. And we're going to adjust one and two to our virtual standard COM port uh, data mode or da data speed. And uh, also on to the virtual enhanced uh, COM port to uh, the same. I've got mine set to 115, but you can set yours wherever you want. Uh, now, at this point in time, I'm gonna ask you to go grab a piece of paper. If you wanna pause this, that's fine. Go grab a piece of paper and a pencil because I'm gonna have you writing some stuff down, some notes down that we will use as we go through this whole thing. And uh, so wherever you set your bit rates on one and two, that's uh, what you're going to want to write down on your paper. And you're going to see this virtual standard come up and virtual enhanced come up a lot. Uh, now we're going to move down to uh, menu six, which is right here, which is our audio input level. Um, I've got mine set to 50. You want it mid-level and you can come back and tweak it later if you need to. This is your audio input level, so think of it as the volume control from the computer into your rig. And we're going to go down to menu 8 and set that uh, also mid-level. Mine's at 50. And uh, you can think of this one, uh, the audio output level, as the volume control from your rig back to your computer. We're going to back out of this menu and we're going to go to the advanced menus. You do that by pressing your menu and finding advanced. If advanced doesn't show up here, press more until it does. And by the way, if you haven't set your clock yet, that's where you do that. So we go into advanced and we're going to go down to uh, 17 through 20. And there's 17. And this is really the only one that you have to set, but we'll discuss the other ones. I'll select that, and you'll see I have that set to PTT. So I'm telling the uh, rig I want to use the standard port RTS and use that for a PTT signal. And we'll get out of here. Now let me just show you the other ones quickly. Uh, you, you're, we're not using DTR, so that can be set to off. Um, the virtual enhanced port. This is set to off. However, if you're using uh, Ham Radio Deluxe, you might want to use it for your CW King. For our purposes today, we'll leave it off. And also the DTR, uh, again, 
For our purposes, we've got it off, but you can also use it for ready keying with uh, Ham Radio Deluxe. And I'm not going to give away all my thunder at this point, but uh, I do have plans to actually have a uh, uh, connecting your H, uh, TS-890 to HRD and uh, we'll uh, discuss those settings, uh, settings then. Hi, hi. Now, we're going to get out of this menu and you do that by hitting the escape button and you'll notice that I am on my uh, waterfall. Now we got one more uh, place to go. We want to press and hold the data button which brings up this screen. Uh, this is where you define front inputs and outputs and what they do. Uh, do our base, the basic functions and uh, if you just quickly press the data you'll note this data mode off turns the data mode on. Uh, we could go to data mode on. We could set these up in data mode on if we wanted to. And you'll note that my uh, upper sideband has changed to upper sideband D for data. But we don't want to do that uh, mostly because uh, there are a lot of extra uh, filterings and settings that have to be made. And we're going to keep this kind of basic. We'll go back to our data mode off by a quick press on the data button. and the rear button, uh, or the rear, and let me bring it over here, and I'm going to bring it down, and you can use your use your uh, multi knob, or you can select this, just push the select, and it'll run through. We want it to be on USB audio. You could put it on a LAN, which is if you've got your radio and remote control, and somebody else is doing it or accessory two, so like if you have a micro keyer that's going to be uh, uh, doing the PTT, then you could uh, do that. But we're using the USB audio for our data send and we're good there. So now let's uh, get out of here. I'm just going to press and hold the data button and bring this up. I've got uh, I'm showing you the 20 meter FT8 signals and you'll, you might notice during the little break that comes between the signals and uh, waiting for it to come up here that there are some people who are a little bit ahead, this guy, this guy, this guy, and uh, some people who are a little bit behind. These are all your FT8 signals that are coming through here and wait to the end, yep, a little bit behind, a little bit behind. And this tells me that they uh, just haven't set their time up as well as it should be. They're still within tolerance. The advertised tolerance for this is plus or minus one second. And there's a little bit of fudge factor beyond that. So now I'm gonna go to the computer and show you how to synchronize your time and verify your data ports. Okay, we're up, the radio's up, uh, WSJTX is up, I'm on 20 meters FT4, uh, but before we get into settings and all of that, let me show you time. Come down here into the corner uh, and click on, uh, right click on the time and date down in there, then select adjust date. Now you'll see all of this coming, and you probably might not have seen this if you're using Windows 10, this is Windows 11. Everything I'm going to show you is in Windows 10, but it takes a little while to get to. So uh, we're going to go to uh, down here to additional clocks, and I'm going to go to internet time. I'm going to change my settings. You see, I got timenist.gov. Let's say I wanted to use timeswindows.gov, and I update that. And notice that down here, the sync now has changed as to be equal to that. But I want to go to timenist.gov. There's timenist.gov. So we're going to update again, and it's going to update. If you get an error message here, just keep updating until you don't. Now we're going to go OK, OK. Now, if you didn't want to go through all of that, when you first get to this page, 
you can come here and you can just click sync now and a little check mark will come up there when we've synced or it'll give you an error message in which case we're going to repeat and you can see over here at 40708 and we're at 407 p.m. there uh, we did it and we get our check mark we're good close this now uh, we want to go look at our uh, COM ports. Now, if uh, you're on Windows 10, there's a little white box over here, and you can start typing in there. Uh, and you're going to type, uh, and I'm going to do the same thing here. It's just a different location on Windows 11 versus Windows 10. TV and device manager pops up, and now there's our device manager. I want to open ports, COM and LPT, and you'll see my two COM ports here, COM3 and COM4. Uh, those are my uh, uh, those are my COM ports uh, from the USB on um, on uh, the TS890. I'm going to double click that one, and I want to know is that my enhanced or is that my uh, is that my standard so if you come here to details and click on device description come down here and find location paths click that you see this where it says USB 1 right here that 1 indicates that that is my uh, enhanced okay uh, no I'm going to do it again this time we're going to go to port settings and verify that we are in that 115.2 and everything else is okay. I'm going to repeat the crime on here. Uh, this time we'll do port settings first, 115.2, and details, location path, and you see this is a USB 2 or my standard. So we're good. Now, some places have said that that's not the proper way to do it, uh, that those are inverted. This is the way it is on mine. If things don't work if things are different for you things are different for you if things aren't working try doing it the other way now file we're going to uh, go to settings on WSJT we start off in the general tab and we got uh, ND3N uh, my grid location uh, I would recommend using these settings here uh, but it's up to you they they don't don't affect a lot but these are the ones I find most comfortable to use. Uh, this show D, DXCC grid and work before status uh, is interesting because if you look over here, as I've been coming down, everything's coming up green. So have I worked them? Have I not worked them? Are they a new DXCC? Are, you know, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, so, you know, there's probably a lot of stations I've worked two, three, a dozen times, just didn't know. Cluttering up the bands. So click this show DXCC and you can come over here and see what items that you want to have uh, selected. So I definitely want to see if there's a new DXC there or on the band. And this is relating to the WSJTX log. Uh, not not necessarily your logbook of the world or anything like that. Uh, so it's going to go at when you first turn it on. You'll see it reading the logbook, and uh, that's what goes. Now to save all these settings, whoop, let me show you my audio. You want to make sure your audio is set to the codec on both. And uh, these these are all the devices I have uh, plugged in but uh, you want to click OK and that will save all your settings and you see what started happening immediately I'm on CQ only but all of these stations are stations that I haven't worked now here's Bonaire he's a new new station I'm gonna try and give him a work see if see if, see if he comes back to me and uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. this is where we're just waiting Oh, nope, somebody else is working him so I'm gonna halt that one okay IZ5 CMG Italy 
Let's see if he comes back to me. He's a minus three to me right now. Yep, he came back to me. He gave me a minus one, and I'm giving him a even all, plus zero. Now remember, this was the uh, I Z. Okay, here's the logbook. You can use these for comments and click retain, and it'll be there every time, so you don't have to worry about it. But uh, comments are my rig and antenna and how much power I'm using. And now you see he comes up, he's green, which means I've worked him. Just like I had worked this EA3HKI, I don't need to work him again. And that's all I have to say on the subject of connecting your Kenwood TS890 to the WSJTX suite of programs, of waveforms. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video as much as I've enjoyed putting it together for you. Please uh, be on the lookout for a video similar to this one, but with a different rig. How to connect your FT991A with the WSJT. Uh, and I'm going to do another one too where I show you how to connect your 890 with Ham Radio Deluxe. As always, at your service. And thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for another Ham Shack chat. Please give me a like by popping that thumbs up button. And please share this content with uh, your friends and others on ham related social media. If you have a question or comment or concern about this video, please post it down in the comment section and I will reply to your comment. Usually pretty fast, but always within 24 hours. 7-3 until the next time, I'm Tom, ND3N, and I'm out.